This is the plaintiff, Killeen Stemple. She says her beloved dog, Jasper, was savagely attacked by the defendant's dog, and the uncaring dog owner refuses to pay her vet bills. The defendant's dog's a menace to the neighborhood, who should be muzzled. He's clearly aggressive, and the defendant needs to pay her the $2,400 she says she's owed. This is the defendant, Robert Frasca, Jr. He says he's had issues with the plaintiff's dog before, and so have other people in the neighborhood. The dog isn't trained. It goes after and antagonizes other dogs and is known to be ferocious. Bottom line, the plaintiff entered his property and he's not paying this woman one red cent. He's accused of having vicious propensities. All parties, please hit your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that her dog, Jasper, was savagely attacked by the defendant's dog, and she wants him to pay up. But the defendant says the plaintiff's dog had trouble in the neighborhood before because he's untrained and antagonizes other dogs. It's the case of Dog Wars. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Stemple, you are suing Mr. Frasca for vet bills and pain and suffering based on the fact that, according to you, his dog attacked your dog. All right, let me hear from you first, Ms. Stemple. What happened? I had hired a um, dog sitter. I was going away for Easter with my son and his wife up to my mom's house. And Easter morning, we were you know, making breakfast and preparing Easter dinner. And I noticed there had been a phone call that I missed, so I played it back. And it was the um, Cape Coral Police Department notifying me that my dog had been involved in an incident. So I text um, the dog sitter immediately and I just said, is everything okay? Um, you know, I've gotten a call from the city and she called me right back and she said, um, Jasper was gonna go out for a walk and there was a dog in the, one of the dogs from the neighborhood attacked him while we were, he was still in the driveway. In whose driveway? My own, okay. my driveway. Go on. So um, I, I said, is he okay? And she said, I'm pulling into the emergency vet hospital now. She said, I'm hoping that he's better than he looks. And I said, okay, I'll call my son to meet you there. And she said her husband, Anthony, had stayed at my house with my other dog. And I said, all right. And we packed up and we headed back down. So no Easter dinner? No Easter dinner. Okay. So you, you head back down, and what happens? I called the Lou Pearl Emergency Animal Hospital, and they said um, that they didn't have a lot of information, that they have, had um, put Jasper on morphine to try to ease his pain. I got back to my house, and my neighbor came out um, and as I was headed into the house, and he said, have you seen him yet? And I said, no. I said, did you see him? And he said, yes. He said, I heard it, looked out the window, and he said it was horrible. I went through the garage and grabbed a shovel. And then when did you see your dog? I didn't get to see him until midnight that night. And uh, so you went at midnight to the emergency hospital? Yes, I called them and they said they wouldn't uh, have any information. He was gonna have to go um, under surgery. Um, so they said, call back at 7.30. I called back at 7.30 and they said, call back at 9.30, which I did. And at 9.30, they said, he's, he's still in a procedure and the doctor will call you back as soon as she's finished. So she called me back around 10.30 that night and said that, Gabe told me the extent of his injuries and what she had done and said I could pick him up, which was at midnight. What kind of dog is Jasper? Jasper's a mini schnauzer. So what did they do at the vet? Um, I see stitches. Yeah, yeah, he had on his leg there, she said that was the secondary wound. It was ripped open from underneath his armpit up to his shoulder. Uh, so they went in and, and um, they had to stitch that up. They put a, a drain in his leg. When was the first that time was... that you spoke to the defendant? Oy. The first time I spoke to the defendant was when I got back to my house right after talking to the dog sitter. Um, I said to my son, I want to, um, you know, talk to... Did you know him before this or no? I didn't know his name at that time. 
There had been an incident prior to this, but I we didn't speak during that incident. Okay, wait, what do you mean there I had been an incident prior to this? What do you mean by that? I was walking by his house and I saw the defendant and realized that's where he lived. I didn't know that before that. And as I started to walk by, I looked down and the dog was crouched in a crouching position and just bolted out into the road and grabbed Jasper by the side of his what, this was a different like time? Wait, wait, driveway. I'm sorry, stop. This is a different time prior? Yes. And what was the dog doing loose that time? It was on his own property. So I think that the dogs in Cape Coral can be loose on their own property, but not on the road. Let me hear from you, Mr. Frasca. Okay, how are you, ma'am? Uh, Fine, how are you? Let's go to the uh, uh, first incident first, where... Um, she was walking down the street. The dog was barking. It came onto my my mailbox on the grass. My dog ran after it because it was barking at her. And that's what dogs do. So I ran and I grabbed my dog. Right, but not well-mannered dogs that don't, like, like when you say, I guess you don't have a fence, right? So if your dog responds to your commands, then you could command it not to do that. But how did the plaintiff's dog threaten your dog? It barked? Ferociously Ferociously. At her. Okay, so was there, what happened in that event? Was there ever, uh, there wasn't a hospital visit or a doctor's visit? No. Or everything was kind no. of stopped? Do you have the dog walker uh, who was there? Do you have that dog walker ready to testify? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, because you weren't yes, there, so is. I want to hear from the dog walker. But ma'am, that was two different case things, though. Oh, I know. I, well, I want to talk about the one that's in front of me, which is where the dog walker was. So let okay, me... Okay, that's not yeah. what we were just discussing, though. Yeah, I know. It's In, in a trial, a judge moves forward. Okay, let me hear from you, Mr. Oaks. What happened uh, uh, in the case that's in front of me right now when you were dog walking? My wife, yeah, my wife and I, she's the dog walker. I was I was with her. She She's working right now, so she can't come on, but I was with her the whole time and stayed with Jasper throughout the process. We, we were getting ready we left the house got the dogs a dog we were walking jasper got to roughly the end of the driveway the uh the, the end of whose driveway the the owner's uh, uh jasper's mom's driveway okay miss temple go ahead correct correct so we got to the end of the driveway uh, there were two dogs two young ladies little kids and a, a woman about a driveway away uh, Jasper, we got to the end. Jasper saw a brown dog that he had known. The brown dog walked up to Jasper. They meet, and within one second, the pit bull, uh, which is the defendant's dog, uh, jumped on Jasper's face, just grabbed his face. Were, was Jasper and the brown dog, were they doing anything? They they hadn't even gotten to each other yet. They Were, were they like, barking? You know, no, no noise, no nothing. Just they were getting to they go, were gonna you smell know, the each usual other. sniffings, the usual okay. sniffings. So the two dogs go to smell each other, and then is the pit bull on a leash? I, I know at the point that the pit bull was attacking the uh, uh, Jasper, there was no the leash was was just flapping. Okay, okay, I got that. It. I that I know, and I don't know why. She, How many what stitches happened. did Jasper get, Miss Stemple? Um, I don't have the exact amount of stitches, but the um, if you can imagine a flap that goes from the corner of the mouth up to the ear and into the eye, that was all stitched. All right, so let me hear from you, Mr. Frasca. Actually, you weren't there. Your daughter was walking. Is your daughter yes, available to testify? Yes, ma'am, she is. Okay, let's get her in and let me hear from her. Okay, right. could you raise your right hand, please? You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I help you, God. Yes, I do. Okay, you. what's your name? Chelsea Frasca. Okay, Ms. Frasca, who were you walking the dogs with? My five and six-year-old daughters. Okay, and who was holding on to the dogs? For the walk up the street, um, my six-year-old was holding uh, my dad's dog, um, and I was holding my dog, which is the brown dog in question. Okay, um, what kind of dog is the brown dog? She is a uh, pit ski, so she's pit bull and half husky. Okay. Um, so then what happens? Tell me what happens. 
So um, we're walking down the street with the two dogs. My five-year-old's taking pictures, as she likes to do. So I get to the end of the street. I go to turn around to come back down to my house um, to get the kids ready for dinner and everything. And I see Jasper walking out of his driveway. So I stop my daughter. I switch leashes with her. So I now have my dad's dog, Remy. Why, why did you switch leashes? Just because uh, we don't normally walk her, so I wanted to be rather safe and sorry. And I know my dog, I'm sorry, my dad had said something before about uh, little dogs antagonizing his dog, and it made him uncomfortable and said that, um, you know, he just would rather a tighter grip on the leash if we walked them that day. Okay. Cool. Okay. So I switched leashes just because um, I've raised dogs my entire life, um, namely pit bulls. And I switch leashes. I grabbed the leash. I did um, lock the leash. It was a retractable leash, so I locked the leash. And my five-year, sorry, my six-year-old uh, lets my dog, which is Hennessy, run to Jasper. They just start sniffing each other, and I mean, they don't act aggressive in any way. Uh, Jasper looks up, sees me and Remy, the pit bull. And you're and three driveways away. Yes. Okay, which is how many feet away? Uh, maybe 20, not even 20 feet. Okay, uh, and what happens? As soon as Jasper starts barking at Remy, um, I go to lock in the leash. As soon as she felt me tighten the leash, that's when she's seen the kids around uh, Jasper barking and my dog around Jasper barking. So she takes off to that area. Okay, stop. What does the phrase takes off means? You lost control of the dog? No, I had the leash in my hand the entire time. So how did she take off? Um, as I'm like locking in her leash, I wasn't quite grounded, paying attention. She takes off running. And I'm sorry, I was stop. I need, I need to picture it. She takes off running. So did the leash come out of your hand? No, the leash never left my hand. So she did you run the with the dog? Leash. Yes, I ran with the dog. So you lost control of the dog. The dog was controlling you, right? Because all of a sudden three driveways get crossed and this happens to someone else's dog, right? Right. Right. Okay, Mr. Frasca, did you ever have any conversations with Ms. Stemple after this happened regarding paying for the damages? She had come to my house that evening with her son and she told me that, you know, her dog was in the hospital and I said, oh, sorry. Um, you know, it's a dog bite, it's, uh, it, it, it happens. It was on the street, no humans got hurt. Um, so you, you don't know, feel I, you're responsible? I felt bad, but I felt bad, but then she's like, you know, you know, you're gonna pay twelve hundred dollars and all this, but on the street, her dog is in the neighborhood is very, you know, always vicious. And I have control of my dog when I walk her. Okay, that's I great. But you have. weren't walking her. Your daughter was but walking her. I wasn't her. walking her, no. Right. I wasn't and your daughter her. has just admitted to losing control because there's no other way this could happen. So by the way, don't yell at her after the trial, because it's very clear from the way this happened that the dog was dragging her. I know that. Oh, yes, I mean there's a so tell me then why you wouldn't be responsible for the damage. See, you know, there I, I see in your answer to the complaint a lot of stuff that you know that you don't want to hear about about people ragging on pit bulls and I don't I, I don't you know pit bulls are pit bulls they, they have a right to exist we never punish the behavior of a pit bull it's an animal the animals behave the way animals behave the smaller dog is acting like a smaller dog and being yappy and then your dog is taking off the dogs aren't doing anything that they're not supposed to do my dog was just that's being great but that is not I am not analyzing the behavior of your dog I am analyzing the behavior of the person walking the dog you see so when you entrust yes, someone to, and you know, accidents happen. What I can't believe is that you haven't paid for the damages, you see? Because if your dog is not within your control, legally speaking, what is your defense to paying for it? It's not, hey, stuff happens, tough for you, eat $1,200. Did you see the damage to this dog that your dog did? Because your daughter, God bless you, honey, was not in full control of the dog and the dog w was, was able to overpower your daughter and run three driveways over to attack this dog? How do Honestly, you figure this you're- this is the first time I saw the pictures of the dog. This is the first time I saw the pictures of Jasper. Okay, let's put I've up a picture anything. of Jasper, please. All right, what are you thinking now? 
you know, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Welcome back to the People's Court. The question, which dog incited which dog and who is going to have to pay? Let's go back into the courtroom and find out. Let me ask you, Ms. Stemple, you, the vet bills are a total of $1,200 and the rest of your lawsuit is another $1,200 for pain and suffering. Explain that. The pain and suffering is just the experience that uh, myself and Jasper went through. Um, he didn't go outside, wouldn't go outside for a while. I don't think that I, I mean, not clearly the pictures show that it was pretty traumatizing, it was but I don't think it's, that- Let me just say, I've been doing the, this for 21 years. Those are the worst pictures I've seen in a dog bite. This is a horrible event for everybody who witnessed this. Um, I can't even imagine the five and six year old girl who are watching this and adults yeah. screaming and, uh, you know, I mean, this is, this is horrible. I am sorry that the aftermath was equally horrible. Um, in your discussions with Mr. Frasca, did he ever offer to pay or what did he say to you? When my son and I went to his house that day, um, I said, my dog's in the hospital and they said it's $1,200 right now. And he said, I'm not responsible for your effing dog. Really? And I, and I said, but your dog did this. And he said, my dog's not vicious. Your dog's vicious. And I said, my dog barks. And, and then my son said to him, we can do this one of two ways. Either you can pay for the vet bill now or we'll go take it to court. And he said, I'm not responsible for your effing dog. Get off my property. Are you and serious? We around. Did, I think is, I said to him, uh, he Mr. Frasca, is she accurately describing the conversation that you're telling a woman whose dog is going through surgery uh, and went through all this that you're not responsible for her effing dog? Did you do that? Did you say because that? you're making it out to be that it's all my dog because her dog is vicious and I, and you have not you seen have any the, the encounter in the past. Do you do you have any evidence that her dog is vicious? I wish my sister was here and a few other people that would tell you. Yeah, that, so do I. That's called evidence. Acts. So you having no evidence other than you don't like the sound of the dog's bark, um, and apparently no, your dog true. doesn't either. A at the end of the day, I don't really care how that dog barks, and I don't really care how vicious a breed some people think pit bulls are. I don't care. I care about the behavior of the humans and what the humans do that is negligent. And the law says you must have the dog within your control. And if the dog is not within your control, and that's why this happens, then guess who's paying for the damages? I find against you in the amount of the vet bills, $1,200. I wish I could find for pain and suffering. I cannot, because these cases, even though we love our dogs like we love our children, or maybe less or more, um, you know, you cannot, you don't get pain and suffering because dogs are considered property. So what you get is the amount of money that you are out as a result of this occurring. So I am ruling in your favor in the amount of the $1,200 plus, of course, your court costs that you had to file in order to come to court and get your $1,200 plus, because you had to do it the hard way, plus prejudgment statutory interest from the moment of the vet bill being paid until today. That is my verdict, verdict for the plaintiff. Thank you. So the plaintiff prevails in this case. She gets her court costs, of course, and the, the vet bills, which was $1,200. Mr. Fresco, let me ask you this. Having had this experience, are you doing anything different with your dog, making any kind of changes when you walk it or anything like that? No, I'm in control when I walk my dog. I just don't let anybody else walk my dog anymore. Ms. Temple, uh, do you still walk your dog out on the streets? Yes, I walk it on the street, but I avoid, I avoid that dog at all costs. Yeah, I don't blame you. I'd go in the opposite direction of where he lives, yeah. no question. Well, listen, congratulations, and uh, I'm glad your, your pup is doing fine. Doug, we've talked about this before. There is a leash law requiring people to control their dog. That usually means a six-foot leash. Now, the word control is critical because it's not just that the dog has to be on a leash, but the person holding the leash has to have control over the dog to be able to hold the leash, even if the dog is pulling, to make sure that the dog is pulled away if the dog is about to attack another dog. In this case, the dog was not properly controlled. The little girl let it go, and that's the problem, and that's the liability.
I was in a traffic accident in a roundabout. No witnesses. It's he said, she said. I asked her insurance company for a copy of the statement that she gave to them, and they won't give it to me. Can they do this? Well, um, uh, they don't have a contract with you. So they don't they, work for you. They don't work for you, so they can <laughs> hang up the phone. Uh, the right. real question is, will you be able to get your mitts on it later? And the right. answer should be yes, because yeah. those documents have to be kept. Right. And if you end up uh, having to sue her, right. uh, then you could uh, go to court, and through a discovery motion, you can ask the judge to order them to give it to you. But you might not get it short of a lawsuit or engaging another insurance company well, you won't them. even need it short of a lawsuit. Right. I mean, what you, you know, right. you'd really need it if it was, if there was a lawsuit. Right. And what is it about roundabouts that just, they're like accident know. factories. They are. And, and people don't follow the rules. I know. And it's, and it's not that hard. We live in the, we have a roundabout at the corner <clears throat> right. um, down the block from our house. We, we live in the cul-de-sac and, and we have to go through that day. roundabout every day. And my right. philosophy is... Everybody be my guest. When everybody's done, I'll go because I don't want to yeah, find out that that idiot doesn't realize that right. he's supposed to stop. Right. So I'm not going to bank him that he's going to stop. If I see him coming and right. he's coming 40 miles an hour, right. he's not going to plow into me because I'm not going to move. Right. But you have a, an alternative What's theory. Mine? ¿Quién es más macho? Yes. Like, Your theory no, is no, ¿Quién no. es más macho? So Even true. if the person they're going to plow into is me That's and not, not you. I'm very polite. Look, here are the, here are the basic rules. Traffic inside the circle always has the right of way over people who are approaching, right? And if you have a four-way traffic circle, it's a four-way yield. It's just like a four-way stop. You don't get to hug the bumper of the car in front of you when he goes through and then just keep racing through in a big chain. That whole idea of these things is they're traffic calming devices. They're right. supposed to slow and everything down. And what happens down is the people on the bigger orderly. street or avenue right. will think like, well, no, yeah. we are, no, we no. are the, the, the big that. guns, so we just right. keep going and they uh, have to wait. And that's not true no. because it's a four-way yield. Every car has to yield. Right. And, and the, the basic rule when two cars arrive at the same time is first to arrive, first to drive. That's going to do it for us now, and we will see you in the next session of the People's Court.